Now, this is the new forest. It's an area of getting on for 400 square miles, 20 by 20, yes, getting on for 400 square miles, which has never been enclosed, chiefly because from the very beginning it's belonged to the Crown. It's an area of uh, heath and bog and wild woodland, which it's very easy for a stranger to get lost in, but which is known very well to the people who live here, and they grow up here among ponies because a thousand pony foals were born in the wild on this land every year, and every little kid has a pony before he's no age at all. And uh, they ride, and they hunt the buck, and uh, they really are horsey people. And if you want to see point to point, as originally was, you must come here on Boxing Day. This is Boxing Day. You may think that it's a hell of a time to go for a walk in the country, Boxing Day, because it's bitterly cold today. But if you want to see it, that's when you've got to come. Because on the morning of Boxing Day every year, they hold the point to point races. And this really is point to point because they didn't know until yesterday which point they had to meet at. The news of where the meeting place was was passed around yesterday, and everybody has come, young and old, because they all take part in this. Uh, they had all come to, to this starting place. And there, the riding stewards will lead them out to the start, you see. Even now they don't know where the start is, they only know where they've been told to meet, and then they know it will be within distance of where their races are going to start. Different races will start slightly different places, because there are juvenile races and older races, and so on. And the whole, we all know where the finish is. That's been known for quite a while. But the people who are riding these races don't know it, what route they've got to cover until the race is actually ready to start. And so, unless they know the race, the uh, forest very well, they know where the bogs are, they know where the unpassable tracks are, they know where the Hollywoods are, they'll be at a disadvantage. So it really is point to point. And now as they go out to the start, we'll get into the Jeeps and the Land Rovers and tear around about five or six miles to come to the finishing point where the whole district is gathered. Everybody wearing about four sweaters, everybody with a thermos full of something or other. We are, this is the, is the first race of all, this is a juvenile race. And we wait here at the finish to see them come. Well, it won't come in a rush, it won't be like a finish at Goodwood or somewhere, because they've come a long way over a hard course and some of them have made mistakes and and so on, so they'll come in very sparsely. The first two or three are a long way ahead of the rest of them, and about two thirds of the field will finally make their way to this point, and the other third won't. So then everybody will get in Land Rovers and go off driving, particularly the children's race like this, where people get anxious find out what happened to them, but we'll find that they've got stuck in a bog or they've got lost or that they've finally driven the pony too hard and had tired it out and had to get off and walk it home. But they know what they're doing. This little boy, for instance, is a bit too, uh, uh, he's a bit too young for it, but within a couple of years he, who was brought up among the ponies, will be riding in the junior race without a doubt. And then there will be open races which everybody can join in. There's a ladies race, sometimes two ladies races, and there's a race for the colt hunters. The colt hunters are the, here they come, the colt hunters are the cowboys of the forest. They're the people who round up and keep an eye on and generally ride herd on the wild ponies in the forest. And they're very proud of their colt hunting horses, which are usually a cross between the native pony and a touch of thoroughbred, and they're the ones that really go, and they're the ones that really know the forest. The biggest betting is always on the winner of, of, of the Cold Hunters race. There is also a, uh, an old-timers race. And some of them, that old gentleman was probably in it up to a couple of years ago because there was one who won it at 79, 78, and then he won it at 79, and then finally he announced he was going to win it at 80 on a pony that he'd bred himself. And when we waited at the finish, his horse came in with nobody's back. Nobody's back. His horse came in empty, so to speak. So we thought, oh my lord, the old boy's finally fallen off his perch. So we got in the Land Rover and we went off across the forest looking for him and we found him striding along, swearing like a Smithfield porter, 
because halfway through he thought somebody was getting ahead of him and he thought he'd take a shortcut to beat them. He dived through a hollywood, got knocked off his horse by a holly bush and was, uh, and the horse came in without him. He was as fit as a fiddle and perfectly well, but he was very angry indeed. So that's point to point in the original.